This is Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. Perhaps we call this our Halloween edition. Today we'll talk about the Sela Tersica, also known as the Turkish Saddle, which is the depression or fossa in the sphenoid bone where the pituitary gland resides. And I'm going to try to use this uh, real skull today that was modified for neurosurgical demonstration to show you a little bit about the anatomy of this part of the body. So we're looking into the eye sockets and into the nasal cavity. And uh, back in the nasal cavity there is the nasal septum, in this case, which appears to be a little deviated. So there's the nasal septum. These little bones on either side are the inferior turbinate bones. They're superior and middle turbinate bones that are higher. And the nasal lining covers those and it warms the air as we breathe it. When a surgeon approaches the pituitary socket or the cella tersica, they actually go through the nasal passages. Some surgeons go through the nostril, others will make an incision where the gum is located here and then elevate the nose to get into the nasal passages. So this is a close-up view and the pathway to the cella tersica is right up through there. Sometimes they have to move that uh, nasal septum to the side to get to the back. So I've turned our friend sideways here and uh, we're going to go into the skull here. And the cella tersica is right there in the middle. It's right there at the tip of the pencil. The red here shows you where the carotid comes in and loops around. And you can see then that the cella tersica is directly behind the eye socket, straight back through and just in front of the temple. And those lines would intersect at your cella tersica. Now I've removed the top of the skull and we're going to zoom down into the cella. This area here, this hole and this hole over here where the optic nerves go through to the eyes. The optic chiasm sits right above the cella and pituitary tumors can grow upwards and compress that area. Some of you may have heard of a tuberculum celli meningioma that actually derives or comes from the dural lining right here on top of the cella. This is the posterior clinoid process. And again, you can see my finger fits down into the cella, so the pituitary is not much bigger than my index finger right in there. Now I've split the skull, and here's the cella. This is the nasal septum. And again, the surgeon would come up right alongside the nasal septum. This is the sphenoid sinus. In this patient, it's very spongy. Normally, it's a hollow cavity. Sometimes there are these little spicules of bone. Basically, the surgeon comes through the nostril alongside the nasal septum through a thin layer of bone here into the sphenoid sinus and then through this other thin layer of bone. And there sits the pituitary gland right where my finger would be located. Put something black behind it so you can see the pituitary socket a little better right here. So it's pretty small. And it's because of this small size that uh, what would generally be considered a small tumor can cause a lot of problems. Obviously a tumor of a centimeter, that's not even, but, uh, well, probably three-eighths of an inch or thereabouts. Uh, one inch is 2.54 centimeters, so even a tumor that's two and a half centimeters, that would be the size of an inch. An inch doesn't sound very big, but when the cell itself is only about uh, seven millimeters tall and about uh, eight to ten millimeters across, um, 
a tumor that's a centimeter is rather big for this area. All right, well, that's my introduction to the Cella Tersica. I hope that gives you an appreciation for this very important aspect of anatomy and also for the work that neurosurgeons do to actually get there to take care of problems in this region.